Hello and welcome to the chaotic video of how I made Pirate Jester's props. In Black Salander's Pirate Jester artwork, she uses a candy cane saber as well as what looks to be two daggers that you see on the side. To create my candy cane saber, I pulled my real saber out of my craft room and used it as my measurement. I wanted to make sure that the PVC pipe, I marked out the exact location of the hilt as well as the length of the blade itself. And then from there, I cut my PVC pipe in half. I did not remember where my clippers were. I do have fancy PVC clippers and I literally could not figure out where they were, so I used a Dremel to cut everything in half. From there, I put my PVC pipe in my tinfoil bed in order to heat it. Highly, highly recommend using respirator and doing this outside. PVC heated up is very toxic for your lungs. Don't be like me. Don't be a bad example to the world. Don't end yourself early. When the PVC is fully heated, I am able to bend it a bit. It is a little bit difficult, and again, please, please make sure that you're not touching this when it's blazing hot because it can very easily burn you. I use the oven mitt to kind of guide it so that I can bend it into the candy cane shape that I want, as well as to get the more curved shape of the blade for the saber itself. In the PVC pipe cradle, I heat it up gently. The tin foil allows it to get evenly heated all the way around, and I use my handy dandy little oven mitt in order to turn it and pick it up. I wait until the PVC pipe gets floppy and then I put it in my clamp system. My clamp is the giant wooden hinged piece of plywood with a handle on it where essentially I just put it in there up to the line that I drew as my registration mark and I stand on top of it for as long as I need to until it flattens. Sometimes this can take a very long time. Other times it flattens really, really quickly. I tend to use heavy duty PVC pipe though, which is why my stuff takes a little bit longer to flatten fully down. It's like 100 degrees outside. I don't know if that's accurate. Might be closer to 90 something with the heat index. Uh, working with the heat gun in Georgia during summer is a lot of fun. And I'm sitting on top of my clamp right now <laughs> to make sure it flattens because this has taken 20 minutes to flatten this PVC. Um, I use heavy duty PVC, which is part of why it takes forever, but like it makes stuff really sturdy, so it's worth it. But yeah, yeah, the cicadas are screaming. Welcome to Georgia. Come here often. <laughs> After about 45 minutes of attempting to flatten it, I have my candy cane saber base. From there, I repeat the process with the daggers. I don't show that process because it's the exact same thing. You heat it up, you squish it flat, and you just keep repeating until the PVC cools in a flattened shape. From there, I take my flattened PVC pipes, just tracing out the base shape of the saber onto the EVA foam that I will be using. I use contact cement to adhere the pieces of EVA foam to the PVC pipe, and I use my heat gun to dry the contact cement faster so that I can just move along quickly with the process. I use more EVA foam to wrap the hilt of the candy cane itself, as well as foam clay in order to patch areas that I missed or to smooth things out so that it would be a more uniform shape. You will notice that I did also leave the rubber backing of the mats that I'm using as the top layer because I was already planning on dremeling this all down in order to make it a very like beveled edge. I didn't mind having the textured layer on top because that would literally be dremeled off completely. And unlike in the artwork, I decided to add a hilt to my little candy cane sword just to make it sit better in the scabbard that I was using. So I used my blue painter's tape to create a circular shape, dremeled that down smoothly to look like a peppermint, made a hole in it so that I could slip it easily onto the PVC pipe, and then used foam clay to just kind of fill those areas as well as contact cement to glue it in. Now onto my favorite part of the cosplay, which are my fruit slice gummy daggers based on the little candies I used to eat at Passover as a kid. I created a pattern for the fruit slice itself on cardstock that I had laying around. And from there, cut it out, marked where the PVC pipe would go into the actual pattern, and then carved a channel into the 10 millimeter foam in order to sit the PVC pipe in there evenly. It is a very annoying process the way that I do it in order to cut the foam in such a way that the PVC pipe can sit in it. It takes a while because of the way that I do it, but it for me, it works. From there, I contact cement everything together, use the heat gun to dry the contact cement faster because I don't have all day to sit around and wait for this stuff to dry. And once it's all glued together, I begin beveling it down using my box cutter. 
I patterned out my hilt design and the same method as before. I cut into it so that the PVC pipe can fit into it and then I glue it directly onto the PVC pipe. Once everything is fully dremeled and beveled down, I start painting it with acrylic paint. I actually don't think I put any Plasti Dip on these because I just was running out of time. I did a base coat of spray paint and that was it. It took a while to get the colors exactly right and I wound up using a darker green for the lime slice and a darker reddish orange for the orange slice in order to weather it. And then from there I used a leveling glue mixed in with giant chunks of glitter in order to create a flat base coat that kind of sealed the paint as well as had the glitter on top to kind of mimic the uh, sugar crystal look. And from there we have our cute little fruit slice daggers. They're not quite done yet but they look very adorable. The last step that I used was that I hot glued strips of leather that match my corset onto the handles to give it a little bit more dimension. And there you have it. The children are finished and already need repainting because Dragon Con was brutal to them. It's okay, guys. I'm totally not going insane over the fact that my paint is fully chipped off of my daggers and I'm going to have to redo the entire step and strip them down. No, why would I go insane over that? Thanks for watching. As always, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. And I'm not negative, just realistic.